All right, so today I was checking out this book, kind of a crazy name, Donald Trump, How to Get Rich. Now, you know, I've talked about this before. Don't be turned off by things if it's kind of a gaudy name, you know, How to Get Rich. But uh, if you've been listening to the frameworks that I talk about, go straight to the top. You may or may not agree with everybody's opinion, but go straight to the top. I find in life people have made it to the top. Uh, have the most insight for you. You know, a lot of people are like, oh, well, I don't even want to be a billionaire. It doesn't matter. I talk about this edge effect. Insight comes at the edge of multiple disciplines. George Lucas talked about that with how he came up with the idea of Star Wars, made $3 billion, you know, in some ways changed the world uh, with that movie. And he did it because he was eclectic, reading lots of different things. So I don't care if you're watching this and you're an artist, uh, philanthropist, humanitarian, doctor. There's knowledge here. And that's why I read uh, broad, but I also read at the top. So like them or, or love them or, or hate them, Donald Trump is definitely at the top in a certain sense. But I'm going to read you a chapter here. Maintain your momentum. He talks about this William Levitt, one of the top builders, Sold his company in 1956 for a hundred million dollars. Today's dollars, that's a billion bucks. He made some terrible mistakes, Trump, Trump says. He retired, he married the wrong woman, moved to the south of France, lived on a riviera with his new boat, new wife. One day, though, he got bored of all that, came back into business. Now, he had lost his momentum. You're talking 10, 20 years. But he thought he could get back in. He thought he could recover that momentum. And interesting, Trump says, I saw William Levitt at a cocktail party in 1994, two weeks before he died. He was standing by himself in a corner looking defeated. I didn't know him well, but I approached him, hoping to acquire some wisdom from the master. Mr. Levitt, how are you doing? That's what Trump asked. He said, not good, Donald, not good. Then he said the words that Trump said he'd never forget. I lost my momentum, Donald. I was out of the world for 20 years. I came back and I wasn't the same. Then Trump goes on, no matter how accomplished you are, no matter how well you think you know your business, you have to remain vigilant about the details of your field. You can't get by on experience or smarts. Even the best surgeons need to be retrained regularly to stay current on the latest research and procedures. No matter what you're managing, don't assume you can glide by. Momentum. I can think back in my life, some of the biggest mistakes, the things, the years that I wish I could have back are those where I just lost my momentum. So think of your life this way. There's a hill. That's the hills uh, of life. The conflicts, like Charlie Munger says, life will throw tremendous uh, hardships at you loss of loved ones, betrayal of friends, bankruptcy, recessions, all these things. That re that's represented by this hill. You and whatever you're trying to accomplish, health, wealth, love, and happiness, is you pushing, moment uh, pushing a boulder up. That boulder represents momentum. Now, there's three things that happen to people in my experience. Number one, and the worst, and I hope this haven't, has not happened to you, you get the boulder up as you're pushing it up this hill of life, and you make a mistake and you lose that momentum and it, the, that ball starts rolling back on you. Think back at your life. I guarantee you there's moments in time. Uh, think about health. You know, the best thing you can do weight-wise, body weight-wise, physical, is never get the ball rolling because as the saying goes, you know, to who much is given. Uh, I'm sorry, not, <laughs> wrong parable. Uh person who's faithful with a little will be faithful with a lot as they say the rich get richer and the poor get poor that's not necessarily a conspiracy theory people think that's a conspiracy some of it's the natural progression if you understand math you understand exponential or logarithmic um, uh, sequences where basically things get exponentially quicker and quicker quicker towards an end game or can be in reverse so if you're not careful in life and this guy, William Levitt, he stepped out and he got cocky. For those of you who are in the 67 steps, you know, I talk about uh, 67 steps, principle number three, Sam Walton, his night in the Brazilian jail cell and the humility that you're going to need to get what you want. If you think that the world will respond to you like that, meaning, okay, you've been eating crappy food your whole life and you take and you diet for one day. The world does not respond. There's a lag time. Okay, so as you're pushing this thing, some of you, 
have gotten the boulder to the top of the hill and the boulder sitting there. It's neither in your favor or working against you. That is a precarious position to be in. And uh, for Trump, what he was saying is you never really stay there. The things either rolling back on you and rolling forward. I remember there's a year in my life, a couple of years in my business career where I've always been somebody who's taken a bias towards action as university Stanford talks about the bias towards action, which I now do my best to adhere to at all moments. By the way, if you don't know what the bias towards action, it's a business term that basically says when in doubt and you have two options, a little bit like Occam's razor, which says when in doubt, take the simplest one. The other corollary, as I think of it, um, bias towards action is when you have two options, do the one that takes the most action. I mean, that that's the actionable one instead of waiting, act. Joel Salton, my mentor, used to tell me, he said, Ty, do something, even if it's the wrong thing. That's the bias towards action. So in general, if you feel physically or financially, you're on this precip where, you know, precipice where it's not really rolling, be careful because it's most likely uh, going to roll back on you. That's inertia. Inertia rarely works in your favor. So if you can, though, and the flip side of this, begin to get that rolling. That is why the rich get richer. I was at the Berkshire Hathaway meeting. I walked up to the front. Um, I'm a shareholder, and there was Bill Gates, Warren Buffett, and Charlie Munger just sitting around casually talking. Bill Gates had his had his little card. He wears these sweaters and, like, Nike T-shirts. You'd think he'd be all dressed up for this thing. But I guess once you have... $50 billion, you don't have to try to impress anybody. So he was sitting up there, I'm standing up there with him. And uh, those three guys own companies with a market cap close to a trillion dollars, a trillion dollars. That's literally, I mean, the US economy GDP is like 15, 16 trillion. These guys have 1 15th, and it's not a direct, it's not a perfect analogy, but you get the point. I read somewhere like, I don't know, the top 75 wealthiest people in the world, have as much money as the poorest 3.5 billion people. Now you might say that's not fair and I'm not here to argue politics and uh, economic principles. I will say this, if I had a penny for everything that was unfair in my life or in your life, we'd all be rich. Unfair means nothing. If you come to life with the wrong mental framework, uh, you will be disappointed in life. The fact that the rich get richer it might be annoying for many people, but it's a natural progression that sure, I'm not, again, not politically saying what should be, I'm just saying it is what it is and maybe you will change that in your life. You, maybe you will be an economic activist. But for some of you who won't be that, you may have to accept it. As uh, uh, I think it's the seven habits of highly affected people, You know, he talks about, you have to take control of those things you, that you can have control of. So. Maybe you will start the next Occupy Wall Street, or maybe you won't, but I'll tell you this, as Will Durant says, as the complexity of society increases, as the divisions of labor increase, those people who take advantage of technologies, the newest innovations, they tend to make more and more money. That's why guys like Jeff Bezos, people, outliers. So I'm not sure we can fix that. What we can do is learn from those people. My suggestion to you is maybe you make a billion dollars and give it all away, okay? Uh, so momentum mathematically happens. Uh, the billionaire J.R. Simplot from the agricultural guy, he said, you know, in marbles, you have these handful of marbles, three or four marbles. They're called the taw, T-A-W. And if you don't have those marbles, you can't hit the other marbles. That represented to him, he learned this as a young age, five or 10 years old. These were the capital that you had. So we talked about health-wise, we know this. You get, out of, you get out of shape, it gets hard to get in shape again. That ball starts rolling against you. You know, I, There was a time when I got really into business, I wasn't playing basketball like I normally did. Then I was like, oh, I'm gonna quickly push this ball back up over the hump and get back to great health. I went to UCLA with Jeremy who works with me and uh, I ran up and down the court, jumped up for a rebound, came down, boom, broke my ankle. And I know why because it takes your body time to build momentum. You have what's called are called osteoclasts and osteoblasts. There's, there are uh, functions, biological 
functions, these little parts of your DNA or, or your gene sequence that basically tell these osteoclasts and osteoblasts to go out and decay, eat your bone, and then rebuild it stronger. So if you're jumping a lot, running a lot, I posted a video on my Instagram of away Ben Greenfield, one of my health coaches had taught me uh, about jumping up. You harden up your bones. So you build momentum over time and your bones get stronger and stronger. That's like the rich getting richer physically, right? Arnold Schwarzenegger, the more he worked out, the easier it was to work out. He had gotten that ball over the hump. If you aren't at that place, you might be like me. You're not patient enough. You jump out there and you break your ankle. Then I was set back for six months. So what I've learned since then is, Ty, get in shape and never get out of shape again. Use the fear. So if you're out of shape and watching this, fix it and then never, never go backwards again. So financially, I was talking about the tall with J.R. Simplot. He said with his marbles, you got to keep some cash. So if you're losing continually, living paycheck to paycheck, or cash flow is not working, you will not build financial momentum where money begins to work for you, right? As Einstein, I think, said, one of the great wonders of the universe was the compounding of money. If you look at the, the law of uh, the rule of 72, if you can get 9% return on your money, that means every eight years your money will double. If you could be like guys like Jeff Bezos, these people, they get 30% or more and compounding annual return. You know how much money that is? Well, I have someone who works for me, he's 27 years old. I said, I said, do you know if you take $100,000, if you could save it at 27, invest it in a business. Now, of course, this is pretty ambitious to get 30% year in, year out, but at 57, you'll have $1.2 billion as your net worth. You see, the ball eventually begins to get rolling, uh, to roll for you. I read uh, Evil Knievel, his uh, autobiography, and interesting, here's a man came from nothing, from Butte, Montana, and nobody knew him, he just knew how to, uh, whatever, ride a motorcycle. And at first he started out, not many people knew him, but he became one of the most known people in the world, like Muhammad Ali in the 70s. He literally, at one of his last jumps, 50% of American TVs were tuned to watch him. He had all the momentum in the world working for him, both uh, financially, fame-wise. But you know what happened? He lost the humility. He thought he could step out of the game. He got crazy. There was a publicist who wrote a book about him. He took a baseball bat and a bodyguard, went down to the studios, and beat the guy, uh, beat the guy up and ended up getting sentenced only to 180 days in jail, six months in jail. Now you would think you're Evil Knievel, you're in the 70s, the number one toy that was sold at Christmas was Evil Knievel dolls. This is a man, literally he had 13 yachts and boats at one point, all this wealth. He never recovered from that jail cell, never. He came out there, he came out of there, he no longer had the momentum, the boulder working for him. In fact, it had started to roll back at him and he died a poor man literally with you know nobody hardly remembered who he was he died of died of some chronic lung issues so in evil knievel's life momentum working against him donald trump talks about in this book about the need to stay focused he said in the 1980s everything i touched turned to gold and then i started making wealth like tony robbins says when you prosper you party so he began to party. He said, I was going to fashion shows around the world. And he said, I wasn't looking at the fashion. He you know, started getting distracted by chasing women. And he said, day came, recession, as Warren Buffett says, when the tide comes in, you see who's swimming naked. If you do not have momentum and focus on whatever you're doing, that tide's going to come in. You will be left swimming naked. And he was, I think, $9 billion in debt. $1 billion personally guaranteed. Now, it's a credit and testament to Donald Trump's fortitude. To, he reversed that. Now he's one of the wealthiest people in the world, which is why I like his story, right? Um, but he learned, and he said he never has lost his momentum. Every day, you need to have a little fear waking up and going, if that boulder gets uh, rolling back against me, you know, all the power of positive thinking and all this, the momentum boulder will plow that sucker right over. I'd rather... If I meet somebody versus uh, them having power of positive thinking, and I'm not anti-power uh, power of positive thinking, but I'd rather uh, meet somebody who knows how to move momentum for them. 
That's what I care about when I meet people. They talk about luck. Like Paul Wilder says in uh, Paul Ingalls Wilder in The Little House on the Prairie, he's like, you make your own luck. Certain level, there's some truth to that. There is some fate to life too. But point being, momentum is one of those things. Now, love, it's the same way. People who don't have friends, it gets harder to make friends. If no, if you're a guy and no women are attracted to you, it's a heck of a lot harder to get other women because there's a social bias. There's a, uh, a peer pressure element to attractiveness. We look, even guppies do this. Look, is, do other females find that guy attractive? If the answer is no, you're pushing that boulder and it's rolling back on you. You must begin to get momentum and make friends. I'm gonna talk about in a second how you can do that if you find yourself with the boulder of life rolling back against you and not for you. But again, socially, it matters. You must create momentum. You must know how to win friends and influence people and keep that ball moving forward with friends, with family, with romance. All of those things, it's absolutely important. And then last, happiness. You know, Robin Williams committed suicide. 63 years old, you know, could not handle life anymore. And if you read the article, he was chronically depressed. What is chronic depression? See, a little depression. Martin Seligman, in his book Learned Optimism, speaks of much, about 70%, I think he says, of the depression that gets treated with medication. He said it will, it will solve on its own, right? But there is chronic depression. And once that momentum of continually not feeling happy, you will literally rewire, as Dr. Sharon Molem talks about in his book, Inheritance, your brain will begin to rewire to not be happy. And once that happens, like Richard Dawkins says, too much trial and error, the end game result of that is fatality. And, you know, I'm not going to speak on uh, Robin Williams because I don't know the inside story but just going off what that said, which may or may not be accurate, I would say this is a momentum issue. So my advice to you is the second, the day that momentum happens, uh, negative momentum begins to happen, let's say financially, you wake up and you're losing money, freak out on day one. Most people wait too long as if it will just suddenly and magically uh, start to be profitable. You know, Warren Buffett says the two rules of making money, rule number one, never lose never uh, lose money and number 2 never lose money he continually from 7 years old has been building financial momentum one of my mentors now richard is one of the top real estate agent he started buying stocks investing in real estate uh, or first stock i think he told me at 12 years old i think warren buffett bought his first farm at 12 jr simplot if you read that story he was doing his first business i think he was 10 years old taking some sheep lambs home raising them that a farmer didn't want, selling them for $100, taking the $100, and he's like, never spend it. See, most of us are consumers. So the second we get in good shape, we consume. We then go, ah, now I have an excuse to eat candy because I'm in pretty good shape. No, but then it magnifies 10 times. It's so hard to recover. Financially, you start to make some money, and you're like, I don't need to save it. I got money coming. But you don't understand. Money makes more money. If you kill the capital that you have, if you deplete that too far, you will lose momentum. And like this, this guy uh, that Trump's talking about, he never recovered from it. He died a defeated person. Don't buy into the narrative fallacy. So many of us buy into that. Everything's going to work out just fine. No, grab the reins like Tor Heiderdahl talks about in Kuntiki. You know, grab the reins or the, let me, let me read that. I love this. He can say it so much better than me. You must grab, you know, he talks about fate. All of us believe that there is fate to some level, I think. And then others of us, you know, think that uh, we magically can control life. But I think this book, Kentiki, if I could find it, has the real answer for the balance. He says, uh, here, some people believe in fate, others don't. I do and I don't. It may seem at times as if invisible fingers move us about like puppets on strings, but for sure we are not born to be dragged along. We can grab the strings ourselves and adjust our course at every crossroad or take off at any little trail into the unknown. That's what I want you to do. Now, here's a practical thing and the reason most people lose momentum. We touched on this with Trump's lack of focus with his real estate. 
if you do not have a careful definition of what your end game is, it will be easy to lose focus, which is the precursor to losing momentum. First you lose focus, and that is followed by a loss of momentum. Most of the people that I know that never lose momentum had clear focus. As I said, J.R. Simplot knew he wanted to be in agriculture and business from five or 10 years old, and he stuck with it. Steven Spielberg, he was playing with lenses. I saw that he talked at this little private uh, showing of Indiana Jones here at Arclight in Hollywood. He talked about playing with, with lenses and trying to make movies before he was 10 years old. Because he had focus, Focus then makes it much easier to keep momentum. So some of the reason you may struggle with momentum, instead of beating yourself up, ask yourself as this wonderful book that a lot of you have been sent by me, uh, Managing Oneself. If you don't have it, join the 67 Steps. I send it to you uh, free. I, bu I bought a whole bunch and I'll, I'll mail it out to you. Uh, and Drucker, it's all about if you do not know yourself, you cannot build upon strength. And so you may be losing momentum, for example, physically, because you're like, you just read opportunistically. You got an opportunistic mindset because you read an article that, oh, you should jog a lot. So you have a friend who jogs, but does that match your constitution? It might not. So if you're trying to be focused on running and keep the momentum and jog every day, it might not be suited to you. So sometimes a loss of momentum, instead of feeling like you have a willpower weakness, first go and go, is this something that strongly motivates me? Is there a, a uh, is there an end game here that I want that suits my unique strengths? Financial, same way. People will make it financially a clear destiny. Uh, if you're, a lot of you watching this are in my uh, private VIP uh, live coaching. We, this is the number one question I get. People going, hey, Ty, how in the world do I define my proper end game? If you are watching and you don't have this, you better freak out. There is no narrative. The Hollywood is not true. Life doesn't always end well. But like Tor Heiderdahl says, you can grab the strings of fate. And the first thing to do, the preliminary thing to all success, health, wealth, love, and happiness, is a careful definition of those things that match your constitution strength-wise, as Freud talks about in essay two of civilization is discontents. There are multiple paths to get what you want, but there's probably only one accurate path. Uh, there's multiple paths for humanity, but for you, there's probably not as many paths. If you were born super skinny, you probably shouldn't be a power lifter, right? If you were born super stocky, you probably shouldn't be a sprinter. Horses for courses, as Mike, one of my mentors, used to tell me. So for you, a careful definition, end game, and you must do that. If you're struggling with that, do everything you can. Get the Peter Drucker book. Do uh, personality tests. Do career tests. A lot of you, if you're in 67 Steps uh, or in my live coaching, I talk about that. Ask me if you're in the program. If you're not, you can go to tylopez.com and join that. But remember, today we're talking about momentum. No matter what. Guard your momentum as if it's worth $10 million. As if, it's interesting, Evil Knievel used to keep a vault and his vault had in it uh, at all times, I don't know, a million bucks just thrown in cash on the floor. I'm telling you, and he used to guard that thing and he had carried a gun, a 357 Magnum. <laughs> he said, make sure there's always room next to my bed for my 357. He had a name for it, Jake or something like that. Well, I want you to guard the treasure of your momentum or the vault of your momentum just as well. Anything gets sacrificed if it throws your momentum off. It might be a friendship that you have that's killing your momentum. It may be a financial obligation that you may have to just go, or a business you're doing that you might have to go, this one, I'll never have momentum here. Kill it. It may be physically something you're doing uh, that you get a trainer. Bring in some coaches. Be humble enough. Whatever you do, I want you to freak out. Fear should not be completely avoided. It should be conquered, but not avoided. Fear can be like when I was on the Am at the Amish, they had these 950 horses I lived uh, on a farm with. I learned a lot about horses. And these horses, these stallions, some of them are literally, when you get on, you know, if you ride horses and you get on a stallion, it's like a Ferrari. In fact, you know, I have had a Ferrari and they have the little stallion logo on it, right? That, that, that's the pull. 
And that's what momentum is like. Like it's like this wild animal. It's like a Rottweiler. You know, when it's working on your side, when someone's trying to break into your house, you're happy that that momentum, uh, that that Rottweiler is there. But that thing turns on you. It will kill you. So you know everybody I know that has a Rottweiler, all the smart people, they have a healthy respect for that. Every Amish farmer with those 950 horses, they made sure they didn't walk up behind that stud horse and scare him because that thing will turn around and kill you. In fact, in the 1800s, the number two killer of humans was uh, dairy bulls and uh, stallions. So in the same way, your dreams will be killed or they will be driven forward tremendously by just having compounding of success in this momentum issue. So question I have for you is, what have you lost momentum in? Number one, what area have you lost momentum in? Pick something, health, wealth, love, happiness. And what's a simple thing you can do to regain it? Talk about, leave me a comment here. Tweet it out to me, email me at Ty, Ty Lopez. What is that thing? Because I'm telling you, I want you to inject a new level of fear, not paralyzing fear, motivating fear. Understanding the narrative fallacy is not something you want to fall prey to, okay? Be specific if you can. Like I said, physically it was for me, it was like I wasn't playing basketball and I just jumped back into it. I had gotten out of shape and the end result was a lot of pain. Financially, I had stopped taking a bias towards action and everything I touched in business became was harder than it should have been. Things should flow, especially if you, you know, the first year in business like a baby, it gets harder. But after a few years, business should get a little bit easier. You must create routine. We'll talk about that later. Um, so be very specific. Love, maybe socially, you know, it's gotten very hard. Well, it's a doozy to recover from socially and don't beat yourself up. We're gonna talk about this, uh, talk about this in some of the 67 steps. If you're in 67 steps, re-listen to the one where I talk about um, evolutionary mismatches about the social one because it covers this loss of momentum and happiness. Do not let prolonged levels of depression or unhappiness uh, sink in or they will rewire you. And if you're not careful, it can be uh, fatal physically or just to your dreams and hopes. So leave that to me. By the way, uh, if you enjoy these book of the day like these, I do them on all subjects. Go to tylopez.com. I've got one of the, maybe the biggest online book club in the world. Maybe Oprah's bigger, but 1.4 million people are on it. It's a, a free newsletter, email newsletter. Uh, just enter your email address, no cost, tylopez.com. Check out also the link on my site for 67 steps and the uh, VIP live uh, coaching. So anyway, Check me out on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. Subscribe to the channel if you're here. Thanks so much and uh, check in because I do these uh, almost every day. Momentum, do not lose it, my friend, is a message for myself. Now, I'm like Trump. It's like wake up every day. It's like, how's the momentum going, Ty? How is it? Am I, is it? I tell people, don't worry about how fast you're getting to something. Just worry, is the ball, ball rolling in the right direction? That's what you want. I don't care if you had, if the average millionaire takes 12 to 20 years. Average person trying to get in shape takes 10 years. Who cares? As long as you're moving in the right direction. Everything else can be lost overnight, like evil can evil, like Trump talks about. So thanks so much. Book of the day. Talk to you soon.